The island bears scars of a past that modern archaeology still struggles to explain. Chief among these enigmas are the cart ruts, deep parallel grooves. Have you ever thought about what the earth under your feet is hiding? On a small island in the Mediterranean, the rocks have strange grooves that are exactly straight and evenly spaced. No one can explain them. Some stop at cliffs, while others go out into the ocean. Over many years, people thought they were the tracks of giants, lost towns, and even aliens. Get ready, because what they found will blow your mind. When the Earth remembered every step, Malta and Gozo are two islands. The land itself tells a story, but not with words. Its deep scars in the rock tell the story. From above, the rocky plateaus look like pages from an old plan because they are cut with perfect parallel grooves. Some go straight for hundreds of meters, while others split and twist like railroad tracks that have stopped moving. There are a few that disappear over cliff edges and end suddenly in the air. The same designs can be seen and heard under the water, where they are buried in silence. The strange marks on the ground are called cart ruts, and you can find them all over the islands, more than 150 of them. The most well-known one is at Misrach Gar Il Kabir, which people in the area now call Clapham Junction, because so many grooves meet there. Some go through Ta Chenel, San Paul, and further, cutting through valleys, plateaus, and hills as if they were drawn by an invisible hand. It's amazing how big it is. The stone always has these strange twin lines running through it, like the prints of a society that wouldn't go away. Each rut is part of a pair, which are two narrow channels that run next to each other. The channels are about 11 to 14 centimeters wide, 4 meters apart, and sometimes more than 60 centimeters deep. They move in sync with each other, like something mechanically rolled or slid through them before. Also, each spot has the exact same spacing, depth ratios, and impossible accuracy. Scientists found that the distance between each groove stayed almost the same, even on rough slopes and curves, when they made a digital picture of the land. The sizes were off by only a few millimeters. That level of accuracy is not a fluke. It's what makes a style unique. Limestone is a rock that is as hard as marble when it is dry, but the tracks cut through it. That one fact stumped experts for years. How did people carve such smooth tracks through stone thousands of years ago, before we had tools or engines? Later, experts found that the answer is inside the rock. For how strong limestone is, it has a secret flaw. When it gets wet, it gets soft and almost clay-like. When put under stress, its structure gives way, slowly changing shape with each load that passes through it. It gets hard again when it dries, locking any shape that is pressed into it. Everything changed when this was found. In other words, the ruts might not have been made on purpose at all. Instead, they may have been made by something big crossing the same paths over and over when the ground was wet enough to give way. The grooves might be like geological time capsules that keep the movement tracks in stone as a record of the past. Who made them, though, if that's true? What were they moving? Locals, explorers, and early scientists have all tried to figure out what these lines mean for hundreds of years. Some people said they were the remains of Malta's first railway. Others thought they were paths for rituals carved by temple builders or routes for ancient processions. Some people even thought they were signs of a long-lost civilization that was so advanced that it built stone highways before history started. Each idea added more to the story, but none of them could fully explain what the ruts were. The story got stranger as people looked into it more. It wasn't just that the tracks were there, it was how planned they seemed. Walls that are smooth, depths that are always the same, and perfect spacing make it look like the builders measured each line with tools we didn't think they had. The more precise the grooves looked, the more unsettling the question became. Was Malta just hiding normal human work? Or was it hiding something much older, something that didn't fit into our ideas of when society began? Does it matter if the ruts aren't roads? What if all the ideas we've had about the past, from temple lines to cart tracks, were wrong from the start? In the next part, we'll talk about how hundreds of theories have tried to solve the puzzle over the years and why they have all failed. They have all. Theories through time. Over many years, Malta's ruts seemed to whisper a secret that no one could figure out. They didn't make sense. 
They went over hills and rocks, through fields and under the sea. Everyone who saw them had an opinion, but not all of them were the same. The riddle of these stone tracks became a reflection of people's hopes, fears and ideas about the past from all times. Myths were used to explain things at first. People who came to Malta between the 16th and 19th centuries as tourists, explorers and mystics didn't just see the ruts as marks in the rock. They saw them as proof of something huge, maybe biblical or supernatural. Some people said they were scars from Noah's flood that were made when the water went away. Others thought they were the last signs of Atlantis and proof that the Mediterranean was once ruled by a lost society. The scariest ones said they were made by gods or aliens using technology that people had forgotten about for a long time. They thought the cart tracks were signs from another world, not people. The strange accuracy with which they moved and the way they disappeared into the water seemed to prove it. The phrase, the tracks that lead nowhere, was used as a metaphor for the mysteries of time. As storytellers, occultists and early scientists looked at the ruts, they added to the myth in their own unique ways. People really liked it. For generations, the idea that something impossible could live under normal soil kept people interested. But when archaeology turned into a science, the unknown gave way to the method. In the late 18th century, experts were more interested in facts than stories. When they looked at the ruts, they saw something useful. A lot of them led from old mines to temple sites like Hagar Chim, Menajdra, and Tarxian which were built from the same limestone that the grooves were made of. It looked like the link was clear. It's possible that these were tracks used to move huge blocks of stone from the quarry to the temple. It was a beautiful idea to use carts or sledges to pull heavy things over soft limestone. The pressure would slowly cut deep tracks that would harden over time, but even this reasoning quickly fell apart when it was tested. Some of the ruts went up slopes that were steeper than 30 degrees, which is not possible for cars with wheels. Others crossed each other like rivers, making it impossible for a cart to go along them without running into something. There were no wheels, tools, animal bones, or signs that the tracks went on to softer ground. Every sign came to a sudden stop at the stone. Researchers who were fed up tried looking at things from different views. The slots may not have been for transporting anything at all, some people thought they were irrigation canals built to hold and move water during a time when Malta didn't get much rain. The ruts were too straight, too narrow, and too deep though, so the math didn't work. Others suggested a deeper meaning, saying that the tracks were connected to events in the sky or the orientations of temples that were used in ceremonies that praised the stars. Some geologists tried to get rid of all evidence of human activity by saying that these shapes were made by natural erosion. But limestone doesn't break down in pairs that are evenly spaced for kilometers. At first, each idea made sense, but when looked at more closely, they all fell apart. The ruts wouldn't fit into a single group. They were too mechanical to be natural, too random to be man-made, and too regular to be a mistake. Each answer put an end to one question, but brought up two more. By the early 19th century, Malta's cart ruts were the perfect example of an unsolved archaeological puzzle. This was the kind of puzzle that you could find in textbooks, museums, and late-night films. One expert could show someone else they were wrong, for everyone they were sure they had the answer. Stone cuts on the island kept their silence for decades as if they were making fun of people who tried to explain them. Scientists used lasers and microscopes to look at the rock itself. What they found was more shocking than any story. What they found under the limestone would change the course of Malta's past and our ideas about what early humans could do. The Scientific Breakthrough For many years, Malta's cart tracks were stubborn proof of something that no one could fully explain. Then, in 2008, a group of researchers chose to try instead of guessing. Their method wasn't based on myths or guesses, it was based on science that could be measured and the language of the Earth. Applied geomorphology tools were used by the team, led by geomorphologist Derek Mottishead, to figure out what the ruts were trying to say. They found out how much stress the rock could take in every slope, depth, and angle. What they found made everything different. Globigarina limestone, which is Malta's signature bedrock, was the center of the researchers' attention. They learned that this stone loses almost 80% of its strength when it soaks up water. 
It can change shape under steady pressure when it is that weak. To see if this was true, they kept simulating the weight of old carts and sledges going over wet limestone. The amazing thing was that the pressure alone was enough to cut lines into the soft rock, each pass making the grooves deeper by millimetres. Over many generations, the ruts we see today could form naturally, without being cut or chipped. They would form because of repeated use, weight and time. One of the strangest facts was also described by their models, the junction effect. A place called Misra Gar Il Kabir has dozens of tracks that cross over and split off like railroad lines. The research found that drivers would just move a little to one side to avoid getting stuck once a gap got to a depth of about 0.67 meters, which is about the width of an axle. Over hundreds of years, this easy adjustment created webs of ruts that crossed each other like a map of how people moved in the past. Years later, new technology would prove what the geomorphologists already knew. Hugh S. Group, an archaeologist and his team, went back to Malta's ruins in 2022 and used 3D photogrammetry, laser scanning and microscopic wear analysis to look at them again. Their scans showed that the surfaces had been smoothed, not hacked or cut, and showed the ruts in amazing detail. When looked at closely, the groove walls had tiny marks of compression and wear, like those made when heavy things slide over soft ground over and over again. There were no chisel marks, mining marks, or heat damage from tools. There was only friction and pressure at work. The deeper parts of the ruts lined up exactly with the weaker layers of limestone. This showed that the ancient travelers had taken advantage of the rock's natural behavior, whether they knew it or not. The limestone heritage is a tourist attraction which explains uh, the history of these islands through stone. From this data, a picture of proto-engineers emerged. People who, without knowing much about modern engineering, knew how force, matter and terrain worked together. The constant distance between the ruts matched early Mediterranean wheel gauges of about 1.4 meters, which suggests that the tracks were made by two wheeled carts or sledges with round rollers. Their gentle bends followed the shape of the land, avoiding steep hills and reducing drag as much as possible. Whoever made them was a quiet master who knew how to distribute the load and deal with friction without having to think about it. Then the most shocking thing was found. Underwater, divers exploring near St. Paul's Bay and Marsaskala found the same ruts going across what is now the bottom. Geological dating showed that these buried rocks were above sea level about 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, near the end of the last ice age. What the ruts reveal about ancient Malta. The discovery not only solved a puzzle, but it also changed what we thought we knew about the people who lived in Malta in the past. For many years, they were thought to be simple farmers who used simple tools to build shrines. The ruts, on the other hand, showed that the person was well organized, smart and quiet. These scars were not just there, they were infrastructure, the fossilized leftovers of an early road network that was built out of necessity and got better over time. Each groove was a plan, showing that these people knew how to move things, handle terrain and change their surroundings on purpose. Just like modern towns leave behind roads and foundations, ancient Malta did the same with these ruts. They show how people thought about systems instead of accidents. When the tracks were mapped, another surprise came to light. Many of the ruts went straight from old mines to temple sites and ports on the coast. It was easy to plan supply routes along the lines, which linked where stone was cut to where it was needed and where it could be moved. The design of Malta's megalithic temples, like Igar Chem and Manajdra, was amazingly aligned with the sun's movements. This suggests that the same people who were good at planning logistics were also good at planning the sky. Together, the temples and ruts showed a culture where astronomy and engineering were spoken as a single language. One was written in stone and the other was written in light. It also shows that by its simple presence in the landscape, it attracted attention and attracted people's curiosity. There was proof of a type of useful physics that existed long before equations were made. The person who made and used the ruts naturally knew about friction and slope. They probably used oil or water to make sledges or rollers move more smoothly. 
They also used the soft, hard cycle of limestone to their advantage by wetting it to shape it and then letting it dry in the sun. This wasn't a guess. It was based on observations that were turned into new ideas. It was science long before the word was used. This kind of planning took more than work from each person. It meant organized workers, leadership, and a common goal. Whether they were led by priestly engineers or community managers, the people who built Malta turned it into a living machine, where trade, ritual, and building all happened at the same time. Their work marked the change from people just surviving to people designing things, and from people adjusting to the land to people changing it. This kind of knowledge doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It gets stronger as it is passed down from one family to the next. Each line in the ruts taught me something about strength and endurance. They made what might be called the first industrial memory, a record of motion that turned experience into something that would last. Just when it looked like Malta's ruts were proof of a single mind, even stranger things were found across the Mediterranean. The same patterns were found on shores far away, pointing to a long-lost network that once connected worlds from long ago. A network of knowledge. The story of Malta's cart ruts doesn't end when you leave the country. The researchers found something amazing when they started to compare data from different ancient places. In Sicily, Sardinia, southern Italy, and some parts of Greece, you can see the same two lines cut into limestone, with the same distance between them as in Malta, which is about 1.4 meters. The angles, wear patterns, and even the way the tracks follow the shape of the land all looked the same. It looked like plans for different sites had been shared. Malta's location in the middle of the Mediterranean became more important than ever. The island was at the center of important ancient sea routes long before any known powers ruled these waters. Archaeologists have found obsidian on Lipari and Pantelleria. This is volcanic glass that could only have come by boat. That one clue showed that sailors had come here and traded goods and ideas thousands of years before the Bronze Age. There were hints of early globalization in this network. The matched wheel gauge wasn't a mistake. It was a way for them to talk to each other. Builders who lived hundreds of miles apart may have shared technology and learned which axle lengths worked best, which routes lasted the longest, and how to master the limestone that connected their world. It was like open source engineering from a long time ago, where new ideas were shared over waves instead of lines, and a shared view of the world came with it. On these islands, transportation, construction, and astronomy all came together to form a single field. The temples all faced the same stars, and the ruts all had the same mathematical pattern. This was a society that used craft to connect heaven and earth and measure them. And that's the story of Malta's mysterious cart ruts, evidence that our ancestors were far smarter than history admits. If you enjoyed this journey, like, share, and subscribe, and click the next video appearing on your screen.